Hey guys, this is System, and this is Cave Factory. Hope everyone is well, having a utterly amazing day. Let's go ahead and check out this pack. So, yeah, we're going to give this pack a go. It's going to be the pack we're going to play for the next little bit, so that is pretty cool. It is a 116.5 quest, uh, quest pack, right? So that's kind of how that works. It's kind of uh, stone block esque but it's not really stone block. It has a whole different set of mods, different set of progression, so don't have to worry about that. It is going to be something relatively new, so that's cool. When you kind of start off here, you have a spawner here. So you have a zombie spawner with a lever on it. That's an apotheosis spawner. And uh, outside of that, all you have is a quest book. But I already set the uh, key for the quest book here, so I don't actually need that. I've also gone ahead and looked at a bunch of the early quests, so I knew what I was doing, kind of moved forward. But uh, we'll read this first one here. Welcome to Cave Factory. Your mission here is to raid underground factory and automate as many things as you can. In the world, you will find only stone. The ceiling is made from bedrock, though. Feel free to dig around, but you'll not find any structures underground. Diamond-shaped quests are challenges. Vein miner is in the pack, but you need to finish the Twilight Forest. So that is cool, and uh, that is kind of how that works there. Now, the first thing you need to do is go ahead and get these pebbles. To do that, you can just go to any piece of stone. Doesn't matter if it's on the side or on the top. Just shift and right click, and you'll just get these pebbles. So this is kind of build up over time, which is pretty cool. But you want to go ahead and get them real fast. You probably want to use a macro like me, but uh, I know not everyone has this. It's just built in my mouse. But I have one set up to, I guess, right click every five milliseconds, right? So I get them at a pretty good pace. And uh, we don't need a immense amount, mind you. If you had to do this without a macro, it wouldn't be too bad. It's just uh, you would probably have to do it a couple times, right? Instead of like a whole bunch like I'm going to do it right now. So anyway, I guess that's... Uh, Definitely something there, but uh, once we have a good amount of these, which should be about now, yeah, we actually get a good amount. You can actually kind of highlight the pebbles, then you just hit, uh, is it control? Oh no, I think it's shift K, right? Shift K, there we go. That'll automatically compress all of them for you. So let's go ahead and do that. Gonna take a stack of them, throw them on the ground there. Uh, if you go into the quest book here, the next quest is gonna tell us about wood. To get wood, throw cobblestone on the ground and wait 30 seconds. Depending on what kind of cobble you throw on the ground, you get different types of wood. So that's how you get the different woods in the pack, right? So that's cool. Uh, also, the way you get your different resources in the pack is kind of neat. You notice here it says, whatever you mine, you have the same chance to get random ores. Basically what that means is anytime you mine any kind of stone in this pack, you actually have a chance of getting different ores, whether it be coal, diamonds, emeralds, etc. That's actually how you're going to generate all your early resources. So pretty neat little method of kind of handling the... Um, early, I guess, generation. I mean, even later generation, you're just going to automate it probably with great, right? So I think that's going to be how it kind of progresses as we go. But anyway, let's go ahead and do this here. We need to get some Tigger tools going. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. But we need the tables first. So let's do that. Do this here. Put you there. That looks good. And boom, we got ourselves a crafting station. First thing we probably want is some chests. So let's get them. Uh, the chests we'll put in right here, in right here. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Let's go ahead and break this real quick because I really like that to be connected, right? So let's do that. Sweet. Now we have connected chests, so the table can see the chest here, which is the benefit. We're gonna go ahead and make the other tables here. We need to make the tinker station, so that's good. And then we need the part builder as well. So let's go ahead and get that out of the way. Sweet and sweet and awesome. So we got everything. So part builder, probably put here, tinker right there. Kind of go in here, all these tables are connected, so you can jump in between them, which is really nice. And uh, if I put stuff in the chest here, you can be see right over here, right? So that's kind of how that works there. Let's go to the part builder here, though. Let's do that. Throw some cobblestone in there. Or make a couple tools here from Tinkers, because there is quests associated with them. And I've also already mapped out how many parts I needed, too. So let's do that there. That should be pretty good. And I think that handles all our needs. Also, we go to the quest book here. Uh, click this little button up here. It says click, collect all rewards. We're going to collect everything. It's going to give us a small axe and a small uh, blade there, as well as a furnace, which is nice. So we'll go ahead and grab that furnace real quick. There you go. And uh, pop that up there. Um, then we should be pretty good to go ahead and actually make our tools because we have all our parts now, basically. Uh, let's go ahead and grab pick. Let's go ahead and pop that stuff in there. That looks good. Go over to axe, we've got the free axe head, might as well get that. And the sword, you're gonna need two handles, that's why I made the two extra ones. Pop that right there. There you go, we got a set of tools just like that. That, that, and that. That looks good. Now if we go ahead and accept this quest here, it's gonna give us a diamond. And uh, with that diamond, we can automatically go ahead and upgrade our pickaxe. So you basically take the pickaxe, pop it right here. Sweet. 
It's gonna up the durability from 100 to 600, which is gonna be something you want. You're gonna to wanna to use the diamond on this. Diamonds aren't hard to get in this pack. Again, you just need to mine stone, right? It's random. And then, yeah, it's going to up durability and the mining speed of the pickaxe. So we're going to do that real quick. And that's going to help us out as well. So that's good. We have a quest here. Do we get anything for reward here? We'll make drawers in time. I'm not too worried about that. I want to go ahead and get the dank doll pretty early. Because it's going to give us a magnet, which is going to kind of help us with the mob farm. As well as, uh, it's going to kind of show us how the whole stone and the mining of resources goes as well. We might actually start in here. Let's go in here. Let's go in here. I'm going to end up modifying this uh, little kind of mob farm area. So we have this little spawner here. But they have it kind of so tight that the spawn rates are going to be really bad. So I want to kind of alter this room anyway. But you notice that different kind of resources are kind of dropping at the same time here. So we're kind of doubling up on our kind of little bit of work here. I want to get us a good amount of this here, coal ore. Because once we have that, we'll have a dank doll. And with that dank doll, we'll be able to deal with some of this uh, clutter that we're getting from all the drops here. But uh, I want to go ahead and probably move the spawner probably two blocks back. Probably be the best idea. But uh, maybe we'll go ahead and make the dank first because, yeah, this is getting uh, to be a little much. Anyway, it's good there. Let me see here. How much did I get? How much of the actual coal? We got uh, nine coal. We only need eight. So let's go ahead and grab the coal. Just like so. I think I need eight of them. So let's go ahead and do that there. Let's go ahead and start breaking this stuff, which is awesome. And uh, with eight of this, we make the dank really easy. So, yeah, should be very useful for, I guess, collecting resources in this pack. And uh, it's partly why I want to rush it here. Let's actually clean this out here because everything's a mess. So that's good. Cool. Let's go ahead and work on an actual dank here. Do that. Do this here. Pop that over there. We're going to need some slabs first. And, uh, slabs never come up with the right recipe in this version of, uh, I guess, Minecraft <laughs> 116. It always goes to other kind of planks first, and then you can't pull it out. So you can do that there. Let's go ahead and grab yourself a barrel. Grab yourself a dank. That's cool. Maybe. Go ahead and grab it. That's cool. I want to go ahead and grab all the different kinds of cobblestone here. Let's grab that. Andesite. Limestone. The weathered. Dolomite. We got Gabbro. There's so many different kinds of cobblestone. And like I said in the book there, you can throw different ones on the ground for different types of... Uh, materials as well right different types of wood so that's going to be what most of them are used for uh and a site i probably won't do keep that one separate i'll keep cobblestone separate but anyway let's go ahead and right click with this put all that stuff up there now now anytime that drops as long as i have this on filter pickup which is what i want when i'm actually kind of mining the ores now they're mining the stone i should say we're gonna go back one more layer anyway right so it's going to automatically get deposited into the actual dank and not fill up my inventory so my inventory is just going to get filled up with stuff i want now basically so that works out if we get a whole bunch of redstone we can actually upgrade this up to the next level i think it takes uh eight blocks of redstone they don't have more space that so you could actually filter more and more and more probably uh, like all the drops as well you can just filter everything i think this one it can only hold 256 per slot I may actually say on it yeah it's 256 per slot so it does have a little bit of limitation there but now I have this room a little, little bit bigger for now. I want to make sure we can still hit the lever. But if, uh, if you kind of shift right clip, we have the carry-on mod. So you can go ahead and actually automatically pick that up. Move that back. And uh, as long as I can still hit that lever, we're actually in pretty good shape. Yeah, so that's good there. Probably going to want to go ahead and uh, block that off too. I could put a door there, but I think that's going to mess up the light levels. Yeah, it messes up the light levels a little bit in there. So I'll actually wall it off for now. That's good. I may go ahead and change these all into uh, trap doors as well because I'd be able to get, I guess, a little closer. But that works out. So what I'm going to do now, I think, is go ahead and do a little more mining, grab us a little more resources, and kill us uh, some zombies at the same time. So I should see a little better spawn rates. That was kind of the plan here, right? So I could just kind of do this, which is cool. Get rid of that. Can you go away? <laughs> do that. Go on. Give me another one. Okay, do that there. Uh, also, where did I put that, uh, what you call it there? Didn't I get a... Where did I get that? I, I swear. Oh, this was the quest right here. This is what I wanted, right? The magnet. Let's go ahead and grab the magnet real quick. Now, the magnet is going to make our life a little easier here, too. So let's go ahead and grab that. Uh, goes into what slot here? The charm slot? is not the very bottom one. I think so, right? Put that down there. Oh, we need to turn it on first, I guess. Let's go ahead and do you. Awesome. Go ahead and uh, shift and right-click with it. Or is it just right-click? Yeah, it's just right-click. There you go. But now it's going to start automatically picking up the drops, right? 
So otherwise, I would have had a problem because, uh, you know, it's going to kind of drop all around and suck the mob farm, right? And it would have been a problem. But uh, now with the magnet, it'll get automatically picked up. And you may notice, too, I get some weird ones that uh, zombies should be dropping, right? And the reason that's happening is um, this rotten flush. Basically, when you get it, you drop it on the ground. It actually says it right over here. Where's the quest here? This one. Also, by throwing rotten flush on the ground, you'll get random mob drops. So... Basically, you get this rod and flash, you throw it on the ground, you wait 30 seconds, and then you'll get a random other mob drop, which is really cool. Because uh, usually, I guess, uh, mob drops, I mean, rod and flash is completely useless. It's finally a pack where rod and flash has a use, which is kind of neat, because it gets you all the other mob drops, which is awesome. So I'm going to hand dug this out a little more, just so we have a little space to work in. Also, I did a little more killing, I guess. I have that. You get these two, these uh, roller quarry drops. You can actually turn them into rod and flush. Probably just go ahead and drop those all on the ground, get them all converted, kind of see what we get there. I also went ahead and smelted down a little bit of stone, and I think I also need to do three gold, because uh, we're going to go ahead and make the, what is this called? The blood altar for blood magic. With that, we should be able to get our first dirt, because it actually says it here. Where is it? Right here. To get dirt or lava in this world, it will need some kind of magic, right? So down here, the dirt, granite infused with blood. So we'll probably have to go to here. Is it the, yeah, we'll have to smelt down some of the granite as well, I guess. So we should probably open that up, do that, hunt down some granite. Don't probably need too much of that, maybe like nine or so, kind of get us started, right? So that should work there. I'll probably put that back in there as well. So anyway, there you go. That's good. Then probably go ahead and smelt this down. We have tiny coal too, it gave us this as a reward. So has to be coal though, does not uh, work on charcoal, I don't think. So that's the thing. Anyway, let's go ahead and see if we grab this. We'll need a furnace, I guess. That should not be too hard. Got ourselves a furnace. Maybe. Got ourselves a furnace. There we go. Got ourselves a blood altar. Now, we'll be able to take this and grab the rewards instantly, right? So, we have these rewards over here. Go ahead and grab them. That is good. And uh, the way we're going to get our blood in here is going to be just with the mobs really easily. So, just take it, pop it right there. And this should be already ready to go. So, I'll go ahead and turn this on here. Uh, we got this as a reward here. A dagger of sacrifice. And with that, once I get close to it, just right click. There you go, you got blood in there. So that'll be a super easy way of doing that. Go ahead and grab some of these here. I think I said it only took 10 LP too, so it shouldn't take very much to get that done. Yeah, it's pretty much instant. We had some cabling. We could uh, automate this super fast, but not really much I could do about that. Pop you out. Yo. There you go. Awesome. All around. So yeah, super easy way of getting yourself dirt. Let's go ahead and uh, do another batch here. Go ahead and get rid of you. Hey, you come here too. You get closer. I'll wait till they get a little bit. Come on. There you go. Go grab our granite here. Get ourselves a little area of dirt just so we can start getting hopefully some trees. I saw we're gonna get a wheat seed as a reward, so be easy food early on. And uh, that's kind of what I'm going for here. Maybe we'll go ahead and make a camera or something. No, I guess it'll be the camera. To, does the camera work as a hoe? Can't remember if camera works as a hoe. It may. Anyway, let's do that. Pop you out. Just rinse and repeat, right? Rinse and repeat until you're done. There you go, we got nine, so that's awesome. Probably go ahead and do this right here too. We'll just use this as a little early farm area. Like I said, just a little three by three here. There you go, and pop this here. And uh, I guess we'll just go make like a vanilla hoe for right now, because that isn't like we need anything special, right? So let's go hoe, let's go ahead and grab one of them. That looks good. And then we'll probably need ourselves a... Eh? Oh, I totally forgot about our drops, too. Did I get them? Oh, no. Did they? Didn't despawn, did they? Oh, no. I, I picked it. Oh, I see what happened. I set a hockey, too, for our magnet. I didn't even think about that. Go ahead and dig that. Throw that on the ground, right? Yeah, I set the hockey at, uh, to H. It was on H by default, but I uh, had a conflict, so I kind of forgot about that. Anyway, we have that over there. We have our hoe. Uh, did we grab a reward? Probably not. Let's grab our first wheat seed here. And uh, actually start getting this growing, I guess. I think it gets a penalty. Doesn't it get a penalty if it doesn't have water beside it? Like, it'll keep growing just like this, but I think it gets a penalty if it doesn't have water. I'm not 100% certain about that. Also, do we have twerk? I never checked if we had twerk, actually. Can I twerk this stuff? Oh, I can, too. Ooh, nice. So if we actually had nine of these, we'd grow this super quick, actually. Huh, this is not too bad at all. Yeah, we got the, it's probably not even Turk, it's that, probably that sneaking on trees one. Haven't actually looked, but yeah, there you go. 
Anyway, that's cool. And then I'll have another seed, I guess. Then I could just do that and do that. So we'll spread that out in time. That'll kind of handle our food there. We'll be able to eat bread. There you go. We finish off that quest there too. So we've got a whole bunch of inner pearls actually. Good amount of string. We've got ourselves some bones. So I could actually utilize that to speed up this process as well. Because why not? Go ahead and do you. You. There we go. Look at that. We'll have food in no time. Super simple. Super easy. And then we'll be able to uh, hopefully get more seeds in time too. So there you go. Not too bad at all. Okay, I've gone ahead and smelted up a bunch of our iron as well as our andesite. I'm actually doing some more of that now too. So it takes a little bit of time. You have to smelt up it uh, from the cobblestone form into its, uh, I guess, regular form. So that's cool. And I have most of our iron kind of smelted up as well. All right, let's go ahead and pop this out of here. We're going to go ahead and start working on create, right? So at least starting it anyway. See how that works out for us. But uh, we need to make these alloys here. And to do that, it's just like that. We're going to make a good amount of them, kind of get started. Looks like we make about 12 really easily. So let's start with 12 and just get that going. Open this up here. First thing we're going to hear is these goggles. These goggles are really awesome. They're going to make it so we can kind of look at the great machines and actually know what's going on. So that's cool. So we'll go ahead and uh, pop them on real quick. Don't really need this helmet either. I just got it from one of the mobs that spawned the mob farm there. It was actually a guy with a uh, backpack. He was wearing a backpack. So uh, I think they can sometimes drop backpacks unless it's disabled. So you might get lucky there. I did not. Anyway, the next thing we're going to have to make here, what was the next part? I think it's the sails and the bearing, right? Yeah, we have to go ahead and make one of those. It's going to be what actually produces power for us. So go ahead and get that done. We need uh, some shafts as well as uh, some kind of stone. I already have that. And I guess we have everything here. So there you go. There's our bearing, and then we're going to need some sail frames. Go ahead and grab them as well. We might as well go ahead and upgrade the sail frames too. Really easy. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, they'll work without being upgraded. Just, uh, they'll just provide more stress units, which is something you don't have to worry about right now. But later on, you probably will. <laughs> anyway, right now it doesn't matter too much. Let's just uh, do that right there. That's kind of like the upgraded form. And then anything else we need here right away? Probably not, right? That's everything we need to just uh, get power set up, I guess, the initial power. I guess we can go ahead and make the cog wheels the gearbox as well. Just get them out of the way. Go to uh, gearbox. Sweet. And uh, see what this is here. Uh, we need the cog wheels first. Oh, we need so many buttons, man. I always forget with uh, this mod, for some reason, they just want you to make so many buttons. <laughs> so many friggin' buttons. Anyway, let's go make like 24 buttons. Let's do that right there. That's cool. Make some of these here because you burn through them. Then we'll also need the, what was the other one there? The actual uh, gearbox, right? So go ahead and do that. Make some of these uh, casings here. Then finally the gearbox. So that's cool. Now the rewards for those are probably stuff I want as well. So let's go ahead and grab that. We're gonna get some super glue, large cog wheels, a wrench, which is awesome. The gear shift and some experience. So pretty useful stuff all around. I'll uh, probably need a couple placement blocks here as well. So maybe grab a couple of cobblestone. Do that right there. And I uh, get this set up. We're going to set up uh, in this room kind of temporarily. Not really sure where it's going to end up in time, but uh, it'll sit here for right now, I suppose. Anyway, let's go do that. We'll just uh, aim that down. This going to be where the power comes out. This side is where we're going to want to stick our sails here. Uh, we go ahead and grab something here. It doesn't matter which block is the first block. So. Go ahead and grab, um, we'll just grab a piece of oak here. Do that. I think a uh, wool might work better, but I don't think it matters at this point. But anyway, we're going to do this here. Let's go ahead and break you real quick. Go ahead and have the torch over here. Then we're going to go ahead and uh, grab our sails and uh, start just uh, connecting them here. So you kind of connect the first one. You have to do it kind of freehand. But after that, you kind of go to the edges of the other ones and use the little arrows here to kind of move around the way you want nicely and uh, kind of do it kind of smoothly we don't need it any particular way right now we basically just need them all connected to this block here and then when i get this kind of ready to go here it'll just uh kind of get going and the way you do that is just right click you can see here with this many sales this thing will produce 512 stress units that basically those stress units are used up when they're powering up different machines so it's kind of how that works there now the first machine we want to set up there it's going to be, I guess, this here. We're going to need the mechanical crafters because what we want to make are these crushing wheels. But these crushing wheels, we'll be able to, I guess, uh, use the power uh, that we generate 
to crush down, I guess, uh, cobblestone into sand, into gravel, as well as, I think, do some ore doubling. So that's kind of the plan here. To make the crushing wheels, though, I think it takes a ton of wood. So let's actually... Do I have enough wood here? Probably not. <laughs> I think I like uh, need 21 crafting tables or something. So we'll just do a big batch right here. That looks good. And then pop this stuff out. And then start making crafting tables because that apparently that's important. Let's do that there. And I guess we need another five. I think is what I counted. Awesome. Then we go ahead and make these mechanical crafters here. And we need 21 of these. So that handles that there. Then we go ahead and just uh, kind of get these laid out here. And this is going to be a very temporary setup because uh, we only need to get this kind of crafted up once, right? So that is fine. So we just basically need two crushing wheels and then we're done. Did I grab uh, placement blocks? I did too. Anyway, let's head up here, up here. And then we have to do this kind of specific shape here to be able to actually craft these. And I think we need 16 andesite, which uh, we definitely don't have right now. <laughs> We're gonna have to go craft some more here in a couple minutes, but that's fine. It has to be this kind of shape right here. That is cool. You out of there, you out of there. Then we'll kind of set up the routing here. So that before we do anything, we should have it so it kind of goes to a central point, right? So all these little arrows here need to follow a direction where they all kind of meet up. And the easy way to do that, I guess, is probably down here. We'll use a wrench, right? Wrench there, we'll wrench here. And I guess we could just bring it for the sides, right? So that, that, that. And we'll go uh, this way here. You can make it go all different paths as long as they all kind of meet up together. You know what I mean? I think that all goes the right way right there. So everything will go from the top, kind of come down. The side ones will come over. And everything will meet at this point. So that should work there and uh, should be fine. Next thing we need to do is go ahead and actually power it. So we need to get the power that's being produced here and put it in here. So, yeah, not too bad. Should be able to do that uh, with uh, some gears, right? So let's go ahead and put a gear right here. Go ahead and grab our sills. Eh? And can I uh, do the thing where it'll see it? Oh, it's soft for a second. Yeah, sometimes it's weird connecting the small ones to the big ones. I'll just put it down here and rotate it. It's probably the easier way to do it. There you go. That's uh, connected there. And I'll probably yeah, bring it over one more, just like so. Be a little jank like i said off the start but it doesn't matter gonna want a small gear right here this is gonna be the one that actually powers the uh crafters right that's awesome then we'll go ahead and just bring some shafts over i'm not gonna worry about uh, ramping up the rotational speed yet either because it doesn't really matter anyway that should be good there that should be all powered and basically all we need is a bunch of andesite so hopefully we have enough so let's go grab you grab you Sweet, and uh, see how much of this we can actually make here. We definitely can make enough as long as we get enough nuggets. It looks like we do. Because like I said, we need 16, I believe. So let's go ahead and grab that. I think it was a piece of stone, and I think it was four wood. But I'm going to verify that there. So go to the actual crushing wheels. Let's go to crushing. Check them out there. Might as well pin that. And uh, yeah, that is the recipe. So let's go ahead and get that done. Awesome. Go ahead and uh, pop this stuff off. Go ahead, grab you, you, and you. Set up the recipe ever so easily. Just like that. And then just andesite on, on the outside. And it should start slowly. It's not going to be very quick, right? Being uh, automatically crafted. Is that actually working? Oh, it can't be going that slow. Oh, maybe it is going that slow. So, yeah. All the items will kind of slowly push all the way down to the bottom there. Then we'll actually get our crushing wheels. Now, I could have sped this up. It just doesn't matter because I'm going to break this down immediately afterwards. Because I don't think we need the crafters for anything else at this point. Especially not nothing this big. I don't think anything else uses 21. I'm not sure. I don't know if there's a way of looking. There's, I mean, it'll do all basic crafting, I guess. But uh, for big recipes, I don't know if uh, anything else is going to take this many crafters at all. So... And if so, we'll just do a better setup later on anyway, right? For now, I'll probably uh, use this space for the crushing wheels instead because uh, we need to get them up and running, right? Wait, get this uh, hopefully down here. <laughs> if it actually goes ever so slightly, we could speed these up too. You could do a weird jank thing where you jump from gear to gear, but uh, we'll worry about that in a couple minutes. You're going to come across. There you go. It's going to finish up. It'll be finished. And uh, we will officially have... 
our uh, crushing wheels, which is uh, pretty fantastic. It's such a cool system, man. I mean, Crate is just so amazing. It's just so good at everything it does. You know, it's going to do a little special thing here. I think it just pops off, right? If you have an inventory down there, too, I think it uh, exports directly into it. But uh, we do not. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. There you go. We've got our two crushing wheels. So let's go ahead and break this down and uh, get these puppies set up. Also, I don't have vein mine. I just tried to vein mine these. I don't have that. So next thing we're doing here is go ahead and set up our crushing wheels. I'm just kind of getting them placed where I want them. I think I want them somewhere like that. Then we'll have a place to uh, pipe in the materials, then pump out the materials at a chest, right? So it'll be kind of something like that there. Move the windmill a little further back too, just so we have a little more room here. Maybe give us a chance to kind of speed this up. But basically we need to get uh, two connections of speed to uh, one of each of these, right? So two separate connections, as well as having them spinning in the opposite direction. So one needs to be spinning, this one would be clockwise, and this one would be counterclockwise, I guess would be the way it would work. So they're kind of grounding inwards towards the center. That's kind of how we need it. And that's what we're working towards. So let's go ahead and uh, work on that a little bit. Because uh, maybe a little derpy. We're going to start off with a big gear. So kind of like so. Then we'll immediately put a little gear. Probably down here. Then we'll go ahead and rotate that puppy. And every time you have a big gear connect to a little gear. Kind of like this. It makes this rotate twice the speed of this. Right? So... Just kind of speeds it up. So that's kind of what that's uh, kind of doing there. Go ahead and get this guess and grab another one of these right away. And then I could probably get a little gear up there too. Actually, if it uh, will let me. You're going you're gonna to let me place that. You're going to be uh, difficult. Let's do that there. Let's do that there. Go ahead and get you out of here. Let's see if we can actually get that spun. There you go. So that one's going a little faster. You can see it's actually visibly going faster than this one down here. So it's moving a little quicker, which is what we want. Then we'll go ahead and grab another large. And I guess I need to go one mark high anyway. So I'm also speed it up one more time as well. So we'll only make it go so so fast right now anyway. Because the faster they go, the more stress units they're going to use up anyway. So don't want to go super fast. But that will line up with that right there. So that's kind of perfect actually. So we'll go ahead and uh, see how this works out for us. That is good. Awesome. Go ahead and pop that right there. And that should line up straight with this one. So if I take the shaft straight over it, you know, that one's already spinning the right way. So that is actually fantastic. Um, but we're probably going to have to mess it up. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and uh, see what we can do here. I uh, would need to do, I'm trying to think of how I can make this one. Like I said, I need to make this one spin the opposite direction. I think we can use this gear shift. I think this one might do it. You can actually hold W on them too. And it kind of tells you what they do. This is this really cool kind of interface. Controlling rotational force using a gear shift. Yeah, flips it the opposite direction. So we got this as a reward, and that might actually work for us. Just trying to think about how I'd kind of fit it in here. I guess I could just bring gears across here. Now I think of it, right? So I could have one here and then one here. Yeah, this might actually work fine. Let's go ahead. I've never done it like this before. There you go. That works. That works there. Then I guess I would need this gear shift. So let's go ahead and grab you. Go ahead and see if just a lever works. So if just a lever works, that'd be super simple. Do that, because right now it's not spinning in the right way. It's going the same way as this one, which won't work. But if I do this and do that, yeah, it flipped it in the other direction. And there you go. We got uh, them spinning in the exact way we want. So that is awesome. Let's go ahead and grab a reward here. Oh, we got our shoots here. Awesome. We got uh, two shoots in a barrel. Gave us everything we need to be able to set this up, too. So what we'll do is uh, do that right there. Go ahead and grab these shoots. Go to these shoots here. Go to the ponder. They can basically drop items. They're like droppers, so they can drop things in. Uh, into things, right? So it'll drop into the top of the crushing wheels. You can also stack them like this here. You can wrench them and make them have glass. And... Uh, yeah, they're just really cool all around. They also deposit into inventory, so we could have our inventory right here, right? So that's good. Then we'll go ahead and head up here. They're just uh, really neat kind of items. Oh, we'll need uh, probably one more like chest or something on the top, so we drop things into there too. Actually, let's go ahead and uh, grab a chest. Hopefully, maybe this one that would work. And this should be effectively done. We should be effectively done with the crushing wheels, which is uh, actually pretty cool. There you go. 
Oh, I'd have to uh, break you. <laughs> That's fine. And I think this is going to work. So let's do that and that. Most of them make it have those little glass shoots too, so we can see the items go in there. And the first thing we probably want to do is actually copestone, actually, because it wants us to get sand anyway. So let's go ahead and put some sand in here. And there you go. It's going to start doing its thing. You can see it's kind of grinding. And uh, when it gets kind of through a batch, I forget how many it does at a time. It might be 16. It, we'll kind of see what it goes through here. But it only does so many kind of per batch. Then it kind of waits, right? So it's kind of grinding, it's grinding. We don't have this max speed either. I didn't notice the stress that it's actually using. I guess we could look at it. It's only at 64 SU. I could effectively speed this up probably one or two more times, but I think I would need a little more space. May end up doing that, but it uh, doesn't matter too much. But we already got 32 gravel, so that's not too bad. And once it's done the gravel, we need to run it through again. Then we'll get sand, and uh, that'll be awesome. And then we should be able to start getting the tickers here. Not sure exactly why we needed the sand to get the tickers, but maybe for the calves. That actually makes sense now that I think about it. So we got another 16 there. Might as well go ahead and drop those up there. So yeah, really, really simple, neat little system here. And I think we could run all our different diggets, which is uh, kind of awesome too. So if I ran this through here, through the crushing wheels, yeah, we're guaranteed to 25% chance of a third and then 12% chance of a cobblestone as well. So we'll probably end up doing a system to do all the materials through, uh, I guess, a uh, crate at some point and get everything kind of all looped around. I actually think it's a challenge too. So down here you have these different challenges. Automate, uh, automatic kelp form, which is definitely what we'll do. Um, we might just do that one with vanilla because honestly, you could do a crate but the vanilla one is just too efficient. <laughs> Nothing is faster about uh, automating it with uh, crate uh, or processing. This is the big one here. Make an automatic or processing system with crushing, washing, and compacting nuggets into igots and products sorted into correct chest and drawers. Once you have automatic cobble gen, make it uh, filter ores and send them directly to ore processing system. Uh, we need uh, at least a cobblestone generator, a vanilla one, to be able to do that. Uh, nether stars for days. I don't know how you would automate the wither with just crate. I, do, I don't understand that. Unless you just, if, if you, I see, if I did that and I had to use FTB chunks and um, use claim chunks and make them safe so the wither wouldn't blow it up, I wouldn't consider that valid, me personally. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know if there might be a way of doing it that I'm not aware of, but anyway, if you had to use claim chunks to protect yourself from that, I def definitely would consider, consider that a valid thing. So I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up here. So as always, guys, like this video, please hit that like button. Really liked it. Hit that subscribe button. It is always appreciated. Well, you guys all have a good one. See you guys in the next video. Later.